What's up everybody? This is Travis here for Dev Tips. I'm so excited that you click the play button on this video. Last week we did a video about CSS floats and strangely enough I decided to put on some headphones and use what's called a speech jammer and it messed my awareness up of what I was saying and it maybe it was really funny, maybe it was super annoying. I, it was entertaining for me at least and so there you got a video about it. But in the process of making the video, I uh, stumbled past a few of the main points that I wanted to make in the video. So today we're going to make a video that touches all of those points. We're going to talk about CSS floats and some of the things to be aware of and how to use them properly. And uh, I recommend you still go watch that video because it talks about in the context of grids and I don't talk about it that much in this video. Or at least I'm not sure because I haven't done the video yet. We're going to do that right now. Uh, so let's just jump right in. Right now we're looking at CodePen. CodePen is a place where you can create little, uh, they call them pens, but it's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you see the results right here on the right as you code. So what I've done is I've created a few sections that can describe the floats that we're working with here. So first of all, I want to introduce you to the idea of nothing being floated. In this case, I have an, an image that's inside of the paragraph here, and it's not being floated, it's just chilling in line. And images are naturally in line. And so we notice that the, the image just kind of acts as if it was a character in that string of text and just pushes the characters a little over to the right and makes room for itself. It sits on the baseline, but the, the text doesn't float around it or wrap around it as you might hope to do to receive this you know, stylish um, float. So when you look right down below that, we can see that uh, this image has been floated left. Now, right here, I put a class of float left on the image, and then I have a corresponding CSS selector of float left, and I just float it left and I put a margin on it. So the result of floating an object left within a paragraph is that the, the, the whole paragraph will wrap up around it. Let me show you some para okay. You see the text below it there? How it just wraps down below? That's because the image is not there anymore. And so this wrapping effect is a result of floating it left. Floating right is the exact same thing, just the other way. So it floats right, the image floats and wraps around it as you might expect. Now you can float two objects within a paragraph and here's an example of that. Um, now the interesting thing to point out in this case is that the DevTips logo or the DevTips avatar here is leading the float and if I go to the markup I see that the DevTips image is the, front, the first one and then this uh, image of my face is the second one and they're both floating left. The DevTips logo goes left and then the face and then the text floated around it. And when they float right, you see the opposite is happening. But the, but the logo, or rather the image that was named first, that's floated first and it comes first in the market, is leading the float, meaning it floats right first. And then the Travis face, and then the text is floating around it. Now these are floated right, as you can see by the class of float right here. Let me scroll down a little bit more and we can see that if you don't put words in a paragraph, I, I tinted the box, so here we have pink for the background of the container, this orange is the padding, and then I put red for the border so you can just see all the elements of this container and how it reacts to the image inside of it. If I have no text and no floats in this container, uh, it just acts like you might think it would. The image is inside of a box and nothing special is happening. Let me show you the markup for that. No words, no floats. We have a container and an image, and that's pretty simple. Next, I'm showing you a float left with no words. Now this image, is this, it's the same markup as right up here, except for now I have a float left on the image. Now take a look at what's happening to its container. When you're floating an image inside of a parent container, remember how the text would just float up around it? Well, the same, things that ha the same thing happens to its parent container. It just collapses. You see how it just floated right up there? So the image floats left and the parent collapses. If I had no padding and no border, 
the height of this uh, container element would be zero. It would basically not exist in terms of the space that it takes up. If you have a div, we know that a div being a display element, a display block element will stretch all the way across the screen. And But if you float it, look what happens here. I have this div and I floated it left and I put the class of sup on there because, because you know, sup. Uh, sup does, it just makes the font size there and black green so we can see what it, what it is. But what I want to show here is that the, that the floated element, uh, the size collapses. It's as small as it can be. So, so when you float an image, or sorry, when you float uh, an element, like a div, it will naturally collapse as opposed to a, a, a block element which is naturally 100% uh, width of its parent. So let's talk about when you, what happens when you have many floats. Um, I put a class on here called box wide. Let's see what box wide does. Box wide does a width of 100%. That's the key there. And now I see that I'm floating many objects and notice that they're not stacking one uh, to the left of the other. What they're doing is the float is wrapping down. When there's no space available to the right of an element if you're floating left and to the left of an element if you're floating right, if there's no space available, the next floated object will wrap down. Okay, and that's what these blue boxes are doing. They're just going down below. It looks as if they're just block level elements, but the truth is they're floating left with a width defined as 100%. Now this is an interesting thing to note because when you go into the next example here, I'm floating many objects and they, they, they form a grid, dot, 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 next line, dot, 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 next line, dot, 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 and they're all floated left, but they line up and when the when they've reached the end of the parent, watch what happens when I make this box bigger. See how they float right up into the available space? If there's no available space, they, they collapse down. Now this is a technique that's really important when we get into responsive web design. And we can talk about that when, when the promised grid video comes out next week. The component of floated objects is that you can clear them. So we have floats here to find, and then I also have a clear class, and I'm clearing both. This last box here, this last box here has a, has a div or a, a class of clear on it. Now look at what happens every time. This area will not get taken up by this box. When you put an element, or when you put a, a declaration, a CSS declaration of clear, it will start a new line. It will not float up and, and create that connection right there. And that, that's a key to understand of how to really control floats. So when we see that we, what's the next example? An invisible non-floating clearing object. What that means is I stuck an extra div in here with a class of clear and I didn't float it to the left. So, so it does not have any height um, and it's naturally 100% width because it's not floating left anymore. And that little div is creating that clear, which means that no more elements will float up around this, these floated elements. Now look at the parent element and the container of these floated elements. It wraps around. It, the container stretches to contain its children when there's a clear right before the end of that container. Okay, now this, I, I had to, I used to do this a lot um, back in the day when creating websites. I would create a new div and then I would just style it right in line uh, equals I would do that a lot. And this little element would be my like little tool to clean up my floats. And that way like extra content in the next section wouldn't float up into these, this boxy area and get all messy. Well, there's been a really smart bunch of people and one of the most recent people to give this some, some brain activity is a guy named Nicholas Gallagher. Let me open up his, oh, it opened up in mine. Uh, his website says that we have this clear fix hack and he, he really, really smartly uses 
the pseudo classes of before and after to add those into the box. And if you don't know what a pseudo class is, I'm not going to cover it today, but it's it's a really cool and important um, thing you can do with CSS in in modern uh, uh, website design, where it can actually add an element, an invisible element to the DOM. It's kind of called the shadow DOM, but anyhow, this element he sets to clear. So we don't have to add this extra weight to the markup like I used to do, and, and even this clearing object right here. If you can't get the elements to naturally clear themselves, this is an option to do this um, clear fix. So let me show you the code for that. He says if I add a clear fix class, then before and after I'll add a, um, the content and make a display table, and then on the after one I'll clear both, which is the same as this, so it's clearing it's creating a pseudo element after all of the floated elements and clearing it. And the result is that my, my uh, markup is really nice and clean here. I just have the container and then all of my floated objects. And then there's, there's an invisible guy being created right here. And um, that is what is floating, or sorry, well, that's what's clearing this whole box of, of the whole uh, mess of uh, floated objects. Okay, that is all I wanted to cover today. Clear your floats when you're done with them. It's kind of like picking up your room after you make a mess. And um, I'm going to leave this code pen up. My username is Travis Nielsen. Check out this code pen for the examples that I'm showing you today. And uh, see you next week on Dev Tips. Thanks everybody for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please share it with your friends, your colleagues, share it with your classmates, share it on your social networks and your Google Pluses and your Facebooks, share it on your LinkedIn's, and do all that stuff for me. I'm just trying to get this information out to as many people as I can because uh, the more people that know that uh, know about it, the more I you know, can help and assist with what they're trying to accomplish. And it gives me those good feels, and I like those good feels. So help me out, I'll help you out, give you more information on this stuff later on. If you have any questions about the content we covered, please leave a question in the comments. I can answer every comment, I'm really good about it. And uh, I'm so appreciative that you have stopped by, and I'll talk to you next week.